Well, welcome. It's time for another scintillating conversation. <laughs> it's Ask Mike with our good friend, Mike Leonard. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> How are you doing, Derek? I'm good. How's it going, friend? Going good. I spent the whole day yesterday with my grandkids, so I'm in a good mood. Oh, how could that Tired, be? Tired, but in a right, good mood. Right, right. There's, <laughs> there are times I'm like, where is this coming from? All this bundle of energy. You know, that's very cliche, but yeah, bottle that stuff up. Bottle that stuff up. Yeah. So awesome. So listen, uh, I've enjoyed a lot of these conversations we've been having, but uh, I, I'm curious. What we got on tap today? What are we going to uh, help people with or, you know, just talk about what you got? Well, something we don't really spend a lot of time, whether it's in college or even around coffee cups or other beverages, um, discussing about, yeah, <laughs> discussing uh, in the band programs and orchestra and choir programs. But how to say goodbye when you leave a job. Whoa, whoa, and whoa, whoa. Oh, 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 okay. All right. All right. <laughs> How to say goodbye. You mean people don't stay in the same job forever all the time? Well, from what I see, it, it it's kind of a musical chairs every year. I keep thinking it'll settle someday, but I, I we started this process. I did like 1985 and it's still just a turkey shoot of jobs just rolling around. You know? Sure. Sure. Okay. Well, uh, get us into it. To, what, all right. What well, do you think are best practices that we're going? Yeah, best practices and the psychology behind it for the okay. kids and for the director. But not only just how to say goodbye correctly, um, but um, prepping the job for the next director. Okay. Which which brings a whole psychology into it because, um, and I've been in the position where I left a school in not – great terms with the administration okay. and and your instinct is to you know the heck with them i'm just gonna slam the door and throw the keys on the floor and and leave um and i, I understand that rationale i understand that feeling um but you've got to remember that the kids are involved and the next director had nothing to do with your frustration right uh, that's your getter to say it's bigger than you <laughs> Yeah, it's bigger than me. And uh, so I guess the first thing to kind of attack on this is, you know, just being able to say goodbye to the kids and the community. Um, and I know different things happen. Sometimes jobs switch in April. Sometimes they switch in July at TBA. Um, but with social media, things of that nature, we can still send out things to people. I have a form that uh, Rick has, a form, a document, um, and it has a couple of templates Okay. And it sounds real generic, but it says sample goodbye template. And you guys are welcome to take that and uh, use it to your benefit. And if you like what's on there, use it. If not, you know, use what you need to do. But, you know, just I would say within the context of saying goodbye, um, try to communicate the fact that, uh, you know, growth has occurred and you appreciate the students that you've been around and the parents. Um Try your best not to burn bridges. Sure. I was getting ready to say, listen, to. template, I think, is great from the standpoint of sometimes our emotion gets on the paper and it's not the the best way to do it. Right. As opposed to here are some professional things to say that convey your heart a little bit or, you know, the, yes. the best wishes for everyone <clears throat> without going into the emotional side or and, and can I be me for a second? Sometimes, yes, of course. Yeah. Sometimes I've had this thought, I want to move on. I want to go do something new. I, I Whether I need more challenge, whether uh, it's just not a good fit. But at the same time, I've invested in kids. And I'm not saying this is healthy. I'm just saying this is the truth. Sometimes we're like, but I'll be letting all of them down. I'll be, uh, whoever comes in won't love them as much as I do. That's right. You know, those are kind of human emotions that we factor into that. So I think a template's a great place to start. And you can read it and go, you know what? That sounds pretty professional. And it really says the things that we need to say. And Yes. So there's my two cents. You know, I've always yeah. got them. And, you know, you can find all kinds of, uh, you know, just, just on Facebook or any kind of social media. When directors leave jobs, they'll post a little something. And so sure. utilize that as a good format as well. You know, you might see something on there that said, yeah, I really do need to communicate that to the community and to the kids. But you know, I, we're, we might not think about it at the time. I do like that you said don't burn bridges because it is not an <clears throat> opportunity. I'm going to say this definitively. It is not an opportunity to air dirty laundry, to tell everybody how wronged you have been. Right. 
Agreed. I agree. I agree. <clears throat> if you need to vent those kind of feelings, find your uh, closest friends and vent those feelings and complain about the Christmas parade and whatever else you need to do. And, uh, <laughs> and don't beverages. do that in public. Yeah. Yeah, okay. A few beverages, just don't do that in public. Uh, because whatever bridges you burn, you might need some of those bridges in the future. We, you know, from our <laughs> side of this, Mike, we always say this. You have no idea where you're going to run into those people again. That's right. To treat everybody like they're the most important person you could possibly have a relationship with because you just don't know. Yeah. And a really important person in my life was Lewis Thornton at Wiley High School. I followed him. One okay. of the greatest gentlemen ever. And he he told me one time, I was talking to him when I took the job and I signed the contract and we're sitting in his office. And he goes, uh, Mike, sometimes you got to get along with people that you don't like. You just got to get along with them. And I right. thought those were very strong words of wisdom to, at that time, a 34-year-old Mike Lenny. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Taking over a job that he had built into a program over the course of 11 years. Sure. You know, so, and that, that was kind of, he was perfect at that because there were situations that were occurring that uh, he could have burned a bridge or two, you know, um, the kids loved him, the parents loved him, but there's a little bit of things going on, I suppose you might say, as he, as he left, but he's such a gentleman's gentleman. He just left on the highest regards and then was inducted into the hall of honor for that right. school. So right. I've got a lot of respect for that. You know, he could have used that as a platform to air his grievances, but he didn't. But it's also in the big picture, a chance to be part of continuing something that's great. Yes. And that was and his main concern. Don't belittle or knock down or diminish the success and the greatness of something just because you happen to be leaving. Yes. And he was probably the the prime example of how to leave a program for the next person. I mean, everything I'm going to talk about today are things that he did for me. Right. He And even with all that being said, he kind of looked side-eyed at this 34-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. Like, a, yeah, well, you know, but it's who the school hired. <laughs> you know? right. So he, he did everything he could to make it a smooth landing for me. And in any transition, it's hard. And that's probably so, a great point, too. It's out of your control, whoever's going to follow you. So don't don't hogtie or handcuff them. Yes. <laughs> so, all right. I'll yeah, no quiet. doubt. No, no, no. You, so I, we, I appreciate your input. So we got templates for a yes. letter to kind of do you do that? I guess it, it depends on situation. Do you do that ahead of time? Do you do that as you're leaving? Do you do that after the fact? Do you? Um. I would say I would have something prepared and on my computer, which you know how OCD I am. You know, they always laughed at me at Wiley. I worked there for 19 years and the staff would laugh because I had a letter of resignation <laughs> on a file on my computer on the desktop. And I said, just hey, ready I, to print, just, just ready to print, <laughs> ready to print. It was just more of a joke than anything. But I, right. it really came in handy when the time came because it was very uh, professional and businesslike, but still had a, some emotion to it because I'd taken sure. years to, to, craft to this document of but it's my the right emotion it's the correct, it's the correct emotion. emotion yeah yeah, yeah. so it wasn't like a vindictive thing but i would definitely keep track of, i only worked four jobs in my life um, but i would definitely keep track of uh what things i would do you know how what i would say to them you know just tell them you're grateful for the experiences but they've shared over the past amazing years um give credit to the accomplishments that the kids have done make sure to make it very student oriented not that my band your band has done these things, and this is how we've grown. And I look forward to seeing the true glory years of this school system and this band program um, as I go to a new chapter in my life. Right. Something That's like awesome. that, just to just to, to let them know that you want them to be better than they've ever been, even though you appreciate what they've done. Right. Perfect. And you know, yeah. again, hearkening back on my my experiences when I was in the Lee band in the eighties. We and it's on the I saw it just the other day. It's on the wall of the legacy high school band hall still. Nothing we've done in the past will ever be good enough again. You either believe yeah. that or you don't. Nothing you did is ever going to be good enough again. Let the new guy or gal or person go wherever they need to. Yeah. Yeah. I went and did a clinic for Steve and I saw that on the wall and I thought, that is words of gold yeah. right there. That is words of gold. And you can tell that program lives by that. Well, I I probably should be careful how much of this, but back when I was a sophomore going in, 
we had to be able to do order flats, order sharps, uh, name those, one sharp F2, all the things mm -hmm. that we, and then say that in a certain amount of time, which may have been reflected by a match burning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, may or may not. That, that is really cool. <laughs> Creating memories for a lifetime, are we? <laughs> okay, so um, we got a letter. What else do we need yeah, to so do? Yeah, so we've got the letter going um, and our, our speech. If you're lucky enough, you can talk to the kids face-to-face -face and, and get through that process. But after that point, um, I kind of have like a rough outline that's also on that document that tells all the things that you uh, would be great for you to do as the current director to prepare for the incoming director, whether it be choir, band, or orchestra. And one is leave a detailed packet, both on your desk. I like it in hard copy on the desk, as well as on some sort of device, whether that be a okay. thumb drive or, or whatever the case might be as technology progresses or send them a Google invite to a Google forms or whatever. Sure. Um, one thing is, and I've gone into jobs where I had none of this. And I've gone to jobs where I had all of this ready, you know, so I understand what it feels like to go in. My first job was in Throckmorton. The lady before me had been fired. Okay. And so I took over the job in January as a brand new teacher, had just been married two weeks earlier, and there was nothing, absolutely uh, nothing. So I had to figure it out. But here we go. Welcome uh, one to is, the profession, Mike. Welcome to the profession. <laughs> and I was so young and stupid. Of course, I'm still stupid, but uh, I was so young and stupid that uh, I really didn't think much of it. I thought, well, I can do it my way because my way it. is yeah. going to be the best way because I, I thought I knew everything at that moment. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> uh, so one thing to leave is it's just real common sense to most people, but not to everybody. Leave a whole uh, – your inventory. Include what horns might be with students for band camps, what horns have already gone to the music shop to be repaired, what horns are – not usable, um, what horns are available and what condition they're in. If you keep up with that year by year, you can leave that for the next director and they can kind of know what to do or what to purchase. Well, it kind of sounds like if we're <clears throat> doing our job, that that's an easy thing to do. Yeah, but you'd be surprised how many directors leave a position um, not feeling good about the situation and they just walk out the door and the next director comes sure. in and there's no inventory. They've been doing the inventory, but they just erase totally erase their computer. Oh, uh, see, that's just wrong. <clears throat> yeah. So that's not that uncommon. Okay. So just make sure you do that. It's good karma. Okay. Sure. Have a student roster with contact information as allowed by the school, you know, the school roster, make sure they know that a student leadership roster with contact information. Okay. Cause you're going to need to know who your drum majors are, et cetera. If you really want to get onto it, uh, going back to Lewis Thornton, when I came in, I signed the contract, uh, the end of May. Um, and he actually invited the student leadership in the next day because I spent the night and he allowed me to meet with them. How cool is that? No, I, you know, that he said, okay, great. here's your new, here's your new band director. And he wants to talk to you for about 15 minutes. And they asked me a lot of questions and some I had answers for some I didn't. Um, but yeah, what a gentleman, you know, he could have said, Hey, I'm just gonna, you know, and he, he, he did such a good job. He did leave on good terms, no doubt. Um, but he could have easily said, Hey, you need to deal with that later. But he took right. a time out of his day to make that happen with the student leadership. Um, just as important, a band parent roster. Who are the officers? Contact information, what their duties are. And hearkening back to Mr. Lewis Thornton, he made sure he set up a meeting at a Mexican food restaurant with the band parent president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer with he, his beautiful wife, and me. Wow. So we could sit there and just talk for an hour and, and get to know each other. Um an important one that you'll attest to, and you might have some good input on this one. Make sure you leave the music store roadman contact information. Right. That's a powerful source in your in your school. Well, and we've 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 talked about this minimally, and I try not to uh, force. Yeah, we're not here to much. push things, but but my my point, I have always believed this, and you can disagree because we come from different different sides of it. But I, I firmly believe that most successful programs have a great relationship with a successful music store. Yes. Not necessarily a bunch of music stores. Yeah. But you got one because you've got to be able to say, I need this. This is an emergency. And you have relationship. And I promise you, uh, the music store is a good music store is more interested in a great relationship and your program than just making sure they make money off of you. Right. 
And that's the way that we always operate is we're more interested in you being comfortable, having the things you need, doing everything we can to the best of our ability to make sure that your program is successful. So I agree with you a hundred percent and it's important to do that up front. And, uh, same thing. We always try to make sure we don't. The first thing we talk about is not business. First thing we talk about is, hey, man, tell us about how you do things. Uh, tell us about where you're from. Tell us about what you like, what you appreciate. And we start making that relationship up front because I think it's really important. Yeah, I think all that's important. And some other things that uh, I know, you know, but you didn't mention yet. Um, but when you meet your new roadman or have contact information to meet them, I mean, it's it's a wealth of information for a band director about who in the local area can clinic, right. who who uh, who's who are the ones that uh, set up the criteria for where we go to marching contest, um, who are the ones I need to be in contact with, and you know, and even to the point of where uh, it's not so much nowadays. We're going to talk about this in a future broadcast about job search, but there was a time when the road man and the music stores were incredibly influential. And who went to what job? Because there was right. no internet. Right. You, you you called and said, can I talk to your road man? I remember doing that. Calling I, music stores in different parts of the state. And the, they'd put me on the phone with the road man. I'd say, hey, man, what jobs are open? They'd know the jobs that are open before anything was known. So It still happens. I've had several conversations oh, yeah. this spring, whether it's uh, a head director looking for uh, someone to hire in as an assistant or a uh, middle school, junior high person, mm-hmm. or, Hey, I know this person's been in your territory for a while. Do you know anything about them? Do you... So those conversations still happen all the time. And I think that a, a good ed rep road toad road man <laughs> is going to be able to give you the positives and mm-hmm. explain the things that, that uh, whether it's the school, the administration or the, or, or the people in their area, a yeah. good one has relationships and can do that for you. Yeah. And I don't want to beat this to death or anything, but also I would bounce ideas or possible communication off my roadman okay. to see how the the average band parent would have replied to it. Because in <laughs> okay. my mind, I would have it written out. I said, this makes perfect sense. And then I'd give it to the roadman and he'd read and go, I don't understand. And right. I go, what a, well, you didn't say this or this or this. Oh, oh. <laughs> or what so, about that? Yeah. Yeah. Or what about this? You know, not just in like beginner horn sales, but just in band banquet. You know, and so would this make sense to you? And they, they read it real quick. And I just, I abused them and used them. <laughs> I think the great part about that too is, and, and it's ironic that we're creating a format that's typically audio, but yeah, so much nonverbal goes into read that and give me your thought. You can watch them as they read it. <laughs> and no matter what comes out of their mouth. <laughs> When they make that, when the saucer eyes go up, or, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, so, and and they usually say you know, Rick Miller, great guy. <laughs> One of the when he he was the first guy to train me in some of this stuff, and yeah, he, he said so. We're at a contest, and somebody comes up that might not have had their best day. He said I might say something like this: Out of all the bands I heard today, yours was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I said that's nonsense, but you're just trying to create a positive. Yeah. And, but my point is, sometimes the nonverbals will give that away before they have a chance to formulate. Yeah. You, yeah. What does the no band director want to hear? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. And the the last thing in that little packet would be either a printed calendar or a iCal something they can download onto their phone that has everything you've set up for the next year. They might want to change part of it. But man, do them a favor, at least get like summer band scheduled or things okay. of that nature. Let's make sure we're clear on this. You're speaking it. We've we kind of gone back to the, I'm leaving. Here's what I'm doing for the next guy. Right. So go ahead and give the next guy your proposed calendar for next year. Yes. I would not um, publicize the calendar because then it creates conflict. Right. But I'd say, you know, well, our marching contest is going to be October 19th. You know, if they're coming in from a different part of the state, they need to know that, you know, or this is when our area marching is going to be and it's going to be in El Paso, whatever the case right. might be. And just this is when I generally start summer band. These are the hours I generally do it. That way they have something to look at and go, well, I like part of this, but I want to change this. And they can change it. Then they can shoot it out. And then the kids invariably will probably contact the previous director a little bit. 
you know, and say, hey, this is different. And then our job then is to say, you need to do what they say. Um, you need to give them a chance. So the band gave me a chance when I showed up and it's going to be different. That means it might be better. Right. And I know that we're going to have future conversations about what to do as we walk into a new program. But I think what you said is important as I have not been on this side of it in this world. So you tell me, is it better to just disappear for a while as the outgoing guy to alleviate? But I just saw Mr. Lenny and man, I miss the way he did things. And, uh, because you know, we're teenagers, we're talking about teenagers. Yeah. yeah. Do you just disappear? Do you, I mean, it's, you do. You do. If you want to be really professional about it, um, you don't want to be rude to anybody, but you need to disappear. Um, uh, when I left whatever jobs, you know, if a kid would email me or whatever, you know, I would just kind of respond back with, well, so-and-so is the person in charge now, said I support them 100%. Um, whatever they're doing, said we're, we're growing into a 5A program when I left Wiley. Right. Um, they were just becoming 5A, and Michelle did a tremendous job there. Um, uh, five years of every school in her cluster had a sweepstakes, yeah. you know what I mean? For five years straight, you know, said, so support them, but never get into a discussion of how we used to do it. And, and I know it's human emotion. It's, it's, right. it's part of our, our persona, I suppose, but it's better to stay out of the way. In fact, even at Wiley, the first time I did a clinic back at Wiley was five years after I retired. Wow. That's I'm a doing a break. <laughs> yeah. But I think the world record is I'm going to holiday this next October for a rehearsal at their stadium. That'll be the first time I've worked with the holiday band as a clinician since I worked there in 1997. <laughs> Talk about disappearing. <laughs> <You're saying boof. laughs> yeah, so and, it's like three decades later. <laughs> and, <laughs> almost. But uh, you're going to show up and people are going to go, who? Yeah, well, they're all, they're all going to tell me their parents were in my band. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. <laughs> I was going to say that, too. Sometimes geography takes care of that. Yeah, it does. It does. If the but next... it makes it harder if you're in the same town. But right. yeah, you bump into them at United or whatever. Or even in the same region at marching contest or, yeah, you know, concert, sight reading, whatever. Yeah. And but... I'll tell you from another perspective, too. It's interesting when you bump into them at United and they tell you how incredible things are going and how much better it is. I know and they're, they're excited. I do. And know part that. of you and part of you are like, man, that's awesome. I'm glad. So then you're thinking, well, crap. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't any good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's great to see him excited, but sometimes you're like, uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, we're dealing with humans, including ourselves. Exactly. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I do think that's a very important thing to remember that it's okay to be human. Yeah. As long as we're the best version. Yeah. Of that human that we can be. Exactly. And and again, I, I'll take it back to this. Uh, you're very nice. I'm sure there are occasions where you're like, man, I'm glad I'm not dealing with uh, student X anymore and have to deal with that constant. Or I'm glad uh, that set of parents won't be calling me and telling me how to do my job on the regular. But by and large, I'm sure it's in the 90s, the high 90s. Great kids, great parents, and if everything was going great and we're not, it's none of their fault, right? And again, I'll I'll give you a personal example. Grew up in Midland, was so excited to be part of the high school band from the time I got in the junior high band, and right before I got to the high school, that director left. I mean, going from ninth grade into tenth grade that director left. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you, we were all like, hey, he just skated us. He just ghosted us. He just left. Yeah. And then, uh, and I, I've told so many people this story, so I don't think it's going to, uh, they hired Randy Story from the competing junior high. <laughs> and the trumpet section said, oh, we'll fix that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, what I'm saying is, and these are all human. All <laughs> well, <laughs> I've, I tell people this too. One <laughs> yeah. of his greatest strengths was motivation. And at the end of two weeks of summer band, if he would have said march into traffic, we'd have been, yes, sir, Mr. Story, here we go. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> but my point is the human part of us mm -hmm. and the part of us that that is loyal and the part of us that, and band is such a 
family team. I don't know if that's a good way to put it. Yeah. But I do think the relationships of band people are closer than a lot of other organizations. And and nobody likes change, Mike. Nobody. Right. It doesn't mean that the change is going to be worse. Yes. It doesn't mean that the change is necessarily going to be incredibly better. We yeah. hope it's just a progression towards excellence. That's what we do. Yeah. And I tell but, you what, um, another thing to avoid, don't give them a list of the bad kids and the bad parents. <laughs> there you go. Don't Let just don't do it, it because <laughs> the only the farthest I went was if it was a school documented discipline issues. I would give that to him and said this this students have this these discipline issues because it's amazing what kids won't work for one person will be totally different for another a fresh person. start for them yeah <clears throat> yeah so I, I tried to not leave any preconceived notions and I do mention Wiley a lot because it's the only job I went into that had a director that had established a program yeah um, at Holiday incredible program. I was there for two years. David Atkins was there for two years. Joe McGee was there for four years. Stan Mulder was there for four years. You know what I mean? Melody right, Hatterton was there for a long time. But at the time I came, it was a different director every two or three years. Right. So it seemed like they were okay with change. Um, <clears throat> um, so going into Wiley, it was a little different. And I'm so thankful for what Lewis did for me. But he didn't. The only thing he did, a uh, personal story about my good friend Luke McMillan. Okay. Luke McMillan was over there playing piano. He was a junior. He d- didn't say a whole lot. And uh, Lewis, uh, he pointed at him and goes, that's Luke McMillan. He's amazing. <laughs> and he was right. <laughs> cool. Luke makes his whole living writing marching shows now. Sure. LukeMcMillanMusic.com. There's my free plug, Luke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yo, me a cup of coffee. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. But, you know, that's the only – he never said one thing about this kid is not a good kid or this other kid's not a good kid or watch out for this parent or anything. He said, here's the roster. And he did present me. These are the four kids that have had pretty big disciplinary issues. These are documented by the school. Here's the – but he didn't give me his opinion. And uh, I, I really like that because I could just start fresh and not feel like, oh, man, that's a bad kid. But I got to tell a, you, yeah. Mike, that is so – I think that's awesome because it's so hard. Yes. Even with the best intentions. I mean, you're probably not trying to – in your mind, you're not – You're trying gonna, to make their life easier. <laughs> sure. You're trying to help and <clears throat> maybe say caution. Yeah. You know, here's, here's some caution areas. Don't. Yeah. But it's a fine line, my friend, where it goes I, from be cautious to I want to get back at this kid. You, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. We justify our intentions. <clears throat> we justify it. But what we really want is to get back at that kid. If I just get them off on the bad foot, then I'm just going to try to ruin their band career. It might not be what you think rationally, but it's an emotion. So you've got to really pull yourself back and go, hey, these kids will behave differently for different directors. Right. And, and I've caught myself doing this before. I'll say something, uh, whether it's about a, a former position, job. And then as I reflect, I'm like, why in the world did I say that? Yeah. That, was, that wasn't necessary. It didn't help anyone. It wasn't kind. You know, all yeah. those fun things that we get to think about after the fact. So it's good to make a, a, a mental, yes, I'm going to be above board. I am going to be, uh, I'm going to do it the right way. Yes. And then once we kind of get that kind of taken care of, this is a list of uh, incredible people who aren't administrators, but they do control your life. And again, this is, this is a Lewis Thornton love session here. Um, He actually took me in his pickup and drove me around the school district all day to, so I could meet all these people. Wow. Introduce me to him. Amazing man. Number one, not necessarily number one, number one on my list here, transportation director. I can see that. This is, this is the, the man or the woman that controls all the transportation in the district. Let's make sure that you get to know them and have their contact info, et cetera, because obviously they have a lot of control over Friday nights and everything. And learn how they want things done. Yes, learn how they want things done. <clears throat> Introduce me to the custodians that work in the band hall. Perfect. I was hoping that was on your list. <laughs> yeah. In fact, we went to lunch with him, went to Betty Rose's barbecue. You awesome. know, and and uh Lewis in his own comedic sense, he allowed me to buy lunch. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, cute. Mike, I'm gonna allow you to buy lunch for us. Uh, he was always the comedian. And I did buy lunch, but got to meet the custodians, could two of them, and uh 
you know, because we all know how important those guys are. Um, people who are in charge of the upkeep and scheduling of the stadium and other performance or practice venues. This is all in a document, so you can just check it off. But those people are supremely important. If you uh, you might need rehearsal, but you don't realize that they water the grass every Tuesday afternoon at four o'clock. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. That way you can sit down with them and figure it out. A really important one, and we all know this, I guess, administrative assistants, commonly known as secretaries. Sure. Uh, I, also I don't known know if there's as a wizards. proper term anymore. I call Wizard. them wizards. <laughs> they, they create magic. Um, they are the most powerful entities on the campus. You know, they can make I your agree. day. They can ruin your career. Okay. So it's not that we cow down to them. Yes, we do. Never mind. <laughs> but, but you know, we, we make sure that we smile when we come in the office. We make sure we ask them, how do you want role taken? How do you need this? How do I fill out a sub form? What am I doing wrong? That's a great right. question to ask a secretary on week two. What am I doing wrong? Well, what now can that I you do to make it, your life better? Yeah. Yes, because they they have so much power and they're so influential in our school system. One we don't really think about a lot, the person who's in charge of the cafeteria. He took me okay. in there and introduced me to that person. There's times when we didn't have an ice machine in the band hall, so there's times we need ice. How do we get ice? Where's the broom to clean up the floor after we get ice? Yeah. What, what time should we not get ice? They don't want us to go in at eight in the morning and empty the ice machine because we're going to St. Angelo and all of a sudden we got lunch coming up. Um, also, sometimes those ladies or men, they're the ones that make sack lunches for us if we leave early. Um, so we need to get to know them and figure out how they do their system. Um, we might have, a, if you have like an A lunch, B lunch, C lunch, there might be a time all your kids have to eat at C lunch. Okay. I say they all have to eat C lunch, but you better go to the cafeteria. And it's nice if you've had a little bit of a relationship before and can talk to them and say, hey, by the way, all my kids need to eat during sea lunch. You know what? Because they just, can stop that in a second. <laughs> my brain was going back to so many of our conversations. Again, relationships, communication. Yeah. And that's what we're doing with this list that you're talking about. We're making relationships and opening the lines of communication. Yeah. Because I can tell you when I was in Electra, I made that fatal mistake with the cafeteria people. Somehow I decided they worked for me. <laughs> you know, I'd only been know working four years. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the band director. And so I, I told him, said, we had A lunch and B lunch. And I just went over there and said, hey, all my kids are going to eat in B lunch. The problem was I had built up the band from like 20, 25 kids, like 110. And there's only like 190 in the school. Right. And so that was like over half the population. I just switched into one period. And I just walked <laughs> off. She just called the principal. I said, no, that's not going to happen. The principal called me and said, hey, Mike, that's not going to happen. The cafeteria says it's not going to happen. Oh, my God. I realized how unimportant I was in the Here's chain of, in the food chain. I was at the very bottom. <laughs> Light dawns. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, these wonderful <laughs> ladies don't work for Mike Lenny. I work for them. <laughs> they tell me when my children eat. You know, that's so funny. it's just one to keep in there. Um, leave your contact information so the new director can ask questions throughout the transition. And, uh, you know, try to keep all that on the down low as much as possible. There might be times they'll call you and, and say, like, the kids told me this was tradition. Uh -huh. No, that's not tradition. Or, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird, but that's what they do. That's what we've been <laughs> so, doing. Yeah, that's what we've been doing. So change what you need to change. But, uh, but you know, have give them a little bit of a sounding board to kind of say, you know, and to, to visit about administrators, you know, I want to get this situation taken care of. What's my best approach with this particular administrator? And probably prefaced by, I can tell you what I did. Yes. You're going to have to figure out what you do. Yeah. Because some administrators are very uh, educationally centered. So sure. you have to approach them on an academic level of what needs to happen. Some are more athletically centered so you have to approach them on hey we're another team right but we're on your team sir and here's what i would like to do what can we do so kind of just give some insight to that and like you said just this is what's worked for me um take it or leave it kind of thing right um but then once that's all said and done like you mentioned earlier <clears throat> now it's your job to get out of the way you received your last paycheck um that's no longer your band um right. It's uh never really was your band. Uh, that's you know, you happen to be so the band hard director. to realize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one because it's part of our persona. Musicians, that's part of our heart. That's my babies. 
You know what I mean? But yep. you got to realize that's that's never been your band. It's their band. And you've just got to get out of the way. But I also think that's a mark of a of most educators. Yes. You know, you see the meme going around right now. Your teachers are so thankful the end of the year is coming, but they're so sad that they're going to lose all these babies. Yeah, yeah. Even with all the frustration and all the all the things we deal with, you know, it works that way. But, you know, don't engage in negative discussions. There you go. With anyone. Just Better just avoid it. Go home to your, yeah, go home to your spouse and vent whatever you say. Hey, I need to vent or or call Derek and say, Derek, I need to vent. <laughs> call your <laughs> re- education yeah. rep. Call your call your road guy and say, man, uh, I need to talk about this. And this is it's really hard, but it's the proper way to process this transition for the health of the program and for the well-being of the students. Do everything you can do to be supportive of the new person. And isn't even that though, our goal? Yeah. Yes, it is. But even though anyone who comes to replace you, there's going to be a certain part of your mentality that's going to be, I don't know if they're really good enough in this particular area to sure. do that. But you've got to push that all away from you and just go, there's lots of things they're better at me at doing. You sure. know, um, uh, and let's, if you say, can't, let's, let's touch back on that. Just okay. A second all right. S- same concept. Um, they're not replacing you. They're replacing a position. Yes. If we can remember that it's not personal and maybe I instigated me leaving. Yeah. So why wouldn't I be supportive of that person in that position? And yeah. they're never going to do everything exactly like I do. I'm never going to 100% think everything they do is amazing. But if they're awesome, they're, you know what I mean? That, yeah. that probably wasn't the best way to say the last part of that. You don't have to like everything they do. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Right. You don't because have if it's, to. If it's going to get better, it is going to be different. Right. And they may <laughs> step on your toes a little bit because they're better at some of the things you could never get done. Yes. But, and you that's don't exactly know that right. yet. So so give them the opportunity to be successful. I guess that's where I'm actually going. Yes. Even if you have to rationalize it in your brain as an educator by saying, if we truly are student-centered, this is the path we have to take. Right. And, you know, don't automatically assume that they're going to try and undo everything you've done. That's the way our, our mind wants to perceive it sometimes. Mm-hmm. To make themselves look bad. That's all negative thoughts. Yeah. They're here to fill a position and do the best job they can do. Your job is to support that and then get out of the way. Yes. And if you can't, Avoid negative conversations. Really stay out of the way. I was say, just don't have conversations. Just don't have conversations. <laughs> just say, well, I'm not the director there anymore, blah, blah, blah. And that's, you know, yeah. So, and just leave it as is. And there's a gracious way to get out of that, too. I just don't think I have anything that I can help with in that situation. Yeah. You know, put it back on you. I, want, I just don't know that I can help. I yeah. wish you the best and go get them. But yeah, I don't I don't know how to answer that. Yeah. And you kind of put a bow on it and kind of tie it all together. The main takeaways, I think, are make sure you have a well thought out speech um, document, um, something to share on what you need to do to prepare the kids for the transition, be supportive of the new director in front of the kids, and then make sure you leave a detailed packet on your desk and on a device so they have access to all the information they need to. Then take time to at least give them the contact information. Or if you're a true gentleman like Lewis Thornton, um, take them around, take the whole day off. Introductions. Take them around yeah. and introduce them to everybody there and get things set up for it. And uh, just realize how, how important your job really is. It's super important to the psychology of the school, but also keep, import- keep in your mind that your band is not the most important thing necessarily on campus. It is in my mind. Right. But to the campus, we've got to keep ourselves in perspective. But as far as transitions, they're very emotional with kids, parents, directors. Um, So we have to do things in a certain process so we can, like I, we all love to say, which is true, trust the process. (laughs) Don't try to make up new things as you go. You know, just trust the process, go through it. The kids will be better off. Directors will be better off. Music store will be better off. We'll all be healthier. Okay, I've got two thoughts to wrap this up that I want to okay. run by you. You go for it. The first thought is 
this is all amazing information. It's all available. We're going to put it up there. But this is the process, whether we initiate the change or whether somebody initiates that change for us, we still want to take this high road. Yes. So would you expound on that at all? Sometimes we're leaving and we don't necessarily, that wasn't our first choice. Yeah. And I've had that discussion because our, our next podcast, when we get to it, will be on job search. And uh, there's lots of directors I've run into over the years that they're not leaving on the best terms from their current job. And I really kind of push this point. Said, you know, and we've just got to control what's happening. And even if we did not leave a job with great feelings, We've got to remember those kids signed up for that program for some reason. It's not about you all the time. Yeah, it's not about me. And those kids want to be in band because they don't have to be in band. Right. And those parents don't have to be band boosters. They don't have but, to show up to work in sessions. They did something. And so you've got to give immense amounts of credit to that and be take the high road. And I also say this, any chance I get to talk to young people that are making a transition, the way you leave where you are is the way you're going to go into your next adventure. If you yes. leave angry, if you leave vindictive, if you leave, then I'm not sure it's going to be a real peaceful transition into your next, you know, I don't, whatever word you want to attach to it. Karma, uh, whatever. You yeah. know, seed time <laughs> and harvest. What you plan is what you grow. Yeah. So that's my first thought. And I think we're in agreement on that. My second thought is, the way you leave is probably the greatest proof of who you've told those kids you are. Yes. Because you can be charming all you want to, and y'all can have a lot of fun, but they're watching to see as you leave, he's actually doing all the things that he told us we should do. Mm -hmm. That's or, right. well, he didn't mean any of that. If you're negative yeah. and ugly. So he, yeah. that was all. He's just was, being a two-year-old toddler throwing a tantrum and leaving. <laughs> all those great things he said are a crock. He doesn't believe that. Yeah. So remember, we're always on display for the generation behind us. And we can give them a great life lesson of the best way to do this, maybe not necessarily comfortable thing in our life. Yes. So I did, just wanted to throw that out there. Very cool. Nope. Nobody... It's probably not the, the happiest topic for everybody all the time, but I'm so glad that you took time to give us some great tips and actually just have it on paper. Yes. So so we can read through the emotion and go, oh, okay. This is what we need to do. Yes. So awesome. Hey, as always, ask Mike at intunemusic.com if you have a question about what you heard today. If you have a question or a you know a, a follow-up question on this please send it to us. Uh, we will address those things. Again, that's Ask Mike, all one word, lowercase, at intunemusic.com. Uh, I think Rick in the chair, uh, if you're watching this, is going to post uh, where you can get this material. And uh, if you're just listening, I'm sure if you'll go to intunemusic.com, we'll have a link to the Ask Mike materials on there as well. As always, Mr. Lunny, I hope that uh, we appreciate your knowledge. We appreciate your willingness to share that. Hope you have a fantastic week or until next time. That's right. <laughs> I appreciate you, my friend. You too, my friend. All right. Talk soon. Bye.